it's clear that some people just can't get their heads around the workflow of parametric CAD. So today I'm showcasing something new and unique. Let's explore plasticity. <music> 3D printers are amazing, but I think their true potential is unleashed when their users can design their own parts. That's why I have beginner videos on Tinkercad and a full playlist on designing for 3D printing with Onshape. But some people struggle to get their head around the approach required for parametric CAD. The step up from constrained and dimensioned geometry in something like Onshape or Fusion, from simple drag and drop placement in Tinkercad, certainly can be daunting. My patron Derek told me about a new option called Plasticity, which is marketed as CAD for artists, but I'm sure you'll agree that it has a possible application when it comes to 3D printing. The website for Plasticity is quite simple. We can see that it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux, and that anyone can try it for free for 30 days. It claims to be advanced in the way it handles geometry and fillets, a streamlined workflow, and once you buy it, you have it forever. I think the most popular version for most of my viewers will be the Indie license at US $99, which you can still use on two separate machines and create commercial works with as well. The studio version is aimed at larger organizations and is mandatory if your organization has more than 10 employees. You also get perks like access to beta versions, the chance to give feedback and future proofing for updates. There's a frequently asked questions section and these largely relate to the technical aspects below the surface. But since there's no support or help section up the top, we can see that support is provided via a private Discord community for paying customers. After experimenting with the free trial version, I was more than happy to pay the $99 for the Indie license, which has your license key, instructions for installation, as well as a link to the Discord server. Hopefully, after watching this video, you'll have a good idea on whether you'd like to try it or not as well. This video is not intended to be a tutorial. In fact, I'm still learning plasticity myself. There are some great videos available from Learn Everything About Design with entire objects created with a range of techniques with a similar approach taken in this playlist from Nikita Kapustin. If you're looking for something shorter, Pixel Fondue has a long playlist of videos, less than a minute long, showing specific features. What we're doing instead in this video is modeling the same simple object in Onshape, Tinkercad and Plasticity so you can see which workflow might be best for you. When you open Plasticity for the first time, it will likely feel alien like it does any time you try new software. The first thing you'll probably want to do is to come to the preferences and select how you want the camera controls to relate to the mouse. After that, you'll probably want to set your units and grid size before getting to work. Our creation toolbar down the right hand side will always remain the same, but the additional toolbars along the bottom will change because they're contextual. And if you have no idea where to find a specific command, you can either click on the three dots down here or press F for find, and that will let you type in a command to hopefully find what you're after. One aspect that's really important to get your head around are these selection filters in the top left. You can click to select them or use one, two, three, and four on your keyboard as a shortcut with five turning them all on. By selecting one, vertexes will appear and you'll be able to edit them. Two will do edges on 3D shapes or the entire perimeter of 2D shapes. Three will do faces of 3D shapes or select the area of 2D shapes and four will let you select only solid bodies. You can of course select different aspects by clicking on the left hand side. Another thing about plasticity is that it becomes a lot more powerful once you've learnt some keyboard shortcuts. If a tool has a keyboard shortcut, you can hover over it to learn what it is. There's also a list of keyboard shortcuts in one of the Discord channels, but one thing I was desperate for is a list of keyboard shortcuts like we find in other programs. A reference like this is definitely on my wish list, and I think it would make the barrier to entry a lot lower. So let's model something, and we're going to start with a simplified version of this tool holder that was the first installment of my Onshape series. We'll start in Onshape, which is our parametric CAD example. Using 2D sketch tools, we would start by drawing the outline of what we wanted, and by using dimensions, we can set exactly the diameter of the holes we want, as well as the exact spacing between them. We then take portions of that 2D sketch, firstly to extrude the rear section, and then secondly the front section to a greater height. So what about Tinkercad, which is designed to be very user-friendly for absolute beginners? 
If we want to be precise in Tinkercad, the first thing we need to do is to place a ruler and we'll snap it to one of the major grid lines. Now we can drag out a couple of boxes to start building our shape. We can either drag from the corner or click on the dimension and enter exactly what we want. And because we have that ruler, when we drag out a second shape, not only will we get the dimensions of that, but also the dimensions for the offset back to that ruler origin. Repeating the manipulation of the first box, I can edit the second one to get the exact dimensions and placement. And with those two boxes, I have my basic shape. So how does the workflow in plasticity differ between these two? Well, we have the option to either draw a corner rectangle in 2D, drag it into the rough position, and then press the tab key to be able to input our exact dimensions. We need to either hit return or alternatively right click to finish drawing. We'll now switch to face selection, click in the middle of our object and extrude is selected by default and we simply drag in the direction that we want. Once again, inputting a dimension to get it exactly how we want. Right click to complete. For the rear portion, this time we will use the 3D tool, creating a corner box, clicking to snap to the first corner, clicking to snap to the second, and then dragging up for height and clicking a third time. Once more, we have the chance to input our exact dimensions and then we right click to confirm. If we didn't join these together as we were creating them, we can press Q for Boolean and then click each of the shapes. However, we'll need to override the default by pressing Q for Union and this should join the two together. Again, we right click to finalize. The join line is gone and in our object list, we can see we only have one solid. In Onshape, because I had a sketch with all of the holes included, when I extruded, they were automatically created. But in Tinkercad, we need to make the holes afterwards using a series of hollow cylinders. Again, I can click and enter the dimensions I'm after and click and drag to move this into position. I have these relative inputs, but they're to the left-hand side of the circle, which makes it a little bit more complicated. With my balls in place, I can join together all of my separate shapes by dragging a box around them and then coming up to group. The two rectangular prisms are combined and the holes are applied, giving us most of our shape. We also need to add the holes afterwards in plasticity. I'm going to select this top face and then say plane from selection. And that's going to have me drawing on this top surface. Now I'll use the center circle tool and I'm automatically offered places to snap the center point to. Once again, I can press tab to input the exact size I want. To get the other one an exact offset, it's maybe easiest to input a line as a construction line. After starting the line, I'll press tab. I'll enter 25 and then when I click, this will be placed and I'm gonna repeat this for above. Now when I come back and draw some more circles, they'll be exactly where I want them. I can lock in their size, and I've got the geometry I need to create my holes. I can shut down this temporary construction plane, make sure I'm on face mode, click, and then drag to extrude. And we'll notice here it says select target bodies to cut or join into. I'm gonna click on that, and then my solid. I can right click to confirm and do this twice more. In the Onshape, we have a fillet tool. Inside this tool, we click our two edges, input our radius and click OK. This is really easy, as is adding chamfers with the chamfer tool to make the tool slide in easily. Fillets in Tinkercad, to the best of my knowledge, are very difficult because we can't select this edge and there's no built-in fillet tool. So my workaround, if I'm stuck in Tinkercad, is to make them myself by dragging out a box, then dragging out a cylinder and resizing and aligning the two so the cylinder cuts off most of the box. I can now select these, group once again, and I have the tool I need to create a fillet. I need to switch this to be a hollow, rotate it round to the correct orientation, and then move it into position where I want it to cut. But before I do that, I'm going to click to make a duplicate, move it to the opposite corner, and once again rotate it 90 degrees. And for the final time, I can drag a box around everything and click group. With a bit of lateral thinking, we've managed to create our same object. Now adding fillets and chamfers is where plasticity really shines. We're gonna to go to edge selection, hold shift and click on our two edges. And now we simply click and drag this handle. If we click and drag towards the shape, we'll get a chamfer. If we click and drag away from the shape, we'll get a fillet. If we want it exact, we can enter the dimensions here too. Right click to complete the shape and we've been able to make our part with precision. I would suggest that plasticity, the way I've shown it thus far, is like a bridge between Tinkercad and Parametric CAD. Like Tinkercad, we can still quickly create solids with a few clicks, but we can also use some basic 2D tools for precision. But what about when we want to edit the geometry we've already created? 
We mentioned earlier that Onshape is an example of parametric CAD. And one of the features of parametric CAD is that we have a history list of all of the steps performed to achieve the end result. Anytime I want, I can go back and edit any of my dimensions and the design will update going through the tree to reflect whatever I've entered. So let's make the same change on all three versions. We're going to increase this middle diameter to eight. In Onshape, I update the sketch and hit the tick and I'm finished. The fastest way in Tinkercad is probably to drag out a new cylinder size it to what I'm after, and then move it into position, hoping the grid will help me snap it concentric to the old one. I can then reselect everything and regroup. However, another option is to repeatedly ungroup everything until I get back to my original cylinder. I can then update the dimensions, reposition it, select everything and group once more. Plasticity also has multiple options. I could create another center circle, input my dimensions and lock it over the top of the old one, before selecting it and extruding a cut through the rest of the shape. Alternatively, I can click on the edge of the circle, see in the corner that it's three millimeters, and then select the face inside. This will open the offset face tool and I can push it out one millimeter, which will give me my new radius of four millimeters. Changing the spacing between these is also possible, but if I select both of the edges, I don't get a distance between them. But I can measure that with a temporary line snapping between the two centers and before I click, I can see that that measurement is 25 millimeters. I can then select the internal face, press G for move and shift it in whatever direction I needed, inputting an exact value. Again, doable, even though plasticity isn't intended to be used this way. So let's examine how I intend to use it for 3D printing moving forward. Most of what I design relies on precise 2D sketches using dimensions and constraints to get everything exactly how I want it. Whereas plasticity is primarily focused on artists, so the emphasis is on creative freedom rather than precision. So with that in mind, let's look at two applications where I think plasticity's strengths can really help my workflow. The first is making alteration to the source CAD of other designers. Plasticity doesn't currently support importing STLs, but for those designers who include step files, all we need to do is drag and drop them in. Let's say I'd like to print this, but the fit is a little bit too tight for me. I can select all of these top surfaces, press G for move, and then move it up and down. And as you can see, the filleting engine in Plasticity is handling the new geometry very well. Selecting one of these faces and using the offset tool would also be a very quick and effective way to make a change. But what I think my best use will be is building on my own base parametric CAD models. Let me explain. Recently, I designed this print in place tank top entirely in Onshape. I was able to import the tank tracks that I would be building around and then Onshape was great for getting the exact dimensions and clearances I needed for the print in place mechanisms. Once this stage was done, I printed a simplified model which I used for test fitment. I then continued in Onshape, building up details and embellishments on the tank and honestly I found that really hard because Onshape is not really suited for this type of thing. So in future, now that I have plasticity, I'm going to export a step file from Onshape and then drag that step file into plasticity for embellishment. Of note here is when you use any of the 2D sketch commands, you can press K for knife and then you'll be drawing on whatever face you click first. You can then quickly extrude out the shape that you've drawn and plasticity has a great command to automatically put caps on the end of any shells and that will convert the shell into a solid. Again, by drawing a 2D circle and using the knife tool, it's very quick and easy to build up the required geometry. To build other geometry, Plasticity also has some nice circular and linear array tools. Again, quick and easy to use. I'm still a beginner, but I'm slowly gaining confidence. And in these situations where I'm designing for appearance rather than an accurate fit, I'm finding the workflow of Plasticity quite liberating especially since I'm starting to memorize some of the keyboard shortcuts, which is speeding up the workflow dramatically. This is not going to replace Onshape as my regular CAD, since I mainly design accurate parts for 3D printing, but it will become an important tool in my arsenal. I imagine this two-stage approach would work very well for cosplay, where an accurately modeled handle could be imported and built upon with great freedom. Really, this video is just scratching the surface of what plasticity can do. So I would suggest downloading the free trial, watching some of those great tutorials and seeing if it clicks for you. I know some viewers will be excited to have an option that doesn't need an internet connection and doesn't rely on a subscription model.
Let me know in the comments if plasticity is something you're intending to give a try. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy finding new and exciting ways to expand your design skills. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.